A problem now appears in the sense that simple sequence is still a sequence of numbers, not 0 and 1, but it's still either plus a, plus 3a, minus 3. They're all still numbers that cannot be sent on a real channel like a wireless channel, telephone lines, coaxial cable, Ethernet USB, or even the chips on a printed circuit board. So we devise another strategy to go from numbers to signal and we conclude that an analog waveform is required because this is an analog signal that, that travels on the channel. So we start with a rectangular pulse shape P and T. A rectangular pulse shape is just as a shape of a rectangle and in discrete domain we say that it consists of L ones. The most important parameter in digital communication system design is this L which is called the number of samples per symbol. M stands for modulation. So TM implies a symbol is equal to L multiplied by TS where S is the sampling time. In this case, our L is 4. Amplitude modulation, as we know that modulation is about changing some characteristic of a signal to represent digital information. So in amplitude modulation, what we do is that, okay, we say we had a rectangular pulse shape. So if you multiply it with minus A, we get a signal an analog signal that is capable of traveling on a real channel like this and if you multiply the rectangular pulse shape with a plus a we get something like this from our knowledge of dsp so far we know that we should correlate the incoming signal with the possible choices in the case of a binary modulation we have two possible choices s0 nts and s1 nts basically which represent minus a and plus a if we recall then linearity implies that the scaling of the pulse manifests itself in the scaling of the output. So what we do instead is that we just correlate it with a pulse shape. For this purpose first we need to know the autocorrelation of the pulse shape which in lecture 2 we saw that comes out to be a triangular function. From here it is easy to see that when this plus a scaled pulse shape is correlated with rectangular pulse shape same pulse shape so we get the same triangular shape with the amplitude plus a when rectangular pulse shape scaled by minus a is correlated with another rectangular pulse shape at the receiver we get something like this with the amplitude minus a so the point is we can correlate the incoming signal with one pulse shape only and depending on the amplitude of that pulse shape we figure out what the transmitted information was Something really interesting happens here now and that is a huge difference between analog and digital communication systems. After getting this sample which represents the top value either minus a or plus a, we discard the, all the remaining L minus 1 samples. These are nothing but the reminiscent of the analog waveform that was used to carry the signal along a communication channel. The concept of a match filter starts with that same pulse shape with which we correlate the incoming signal. So this is the pulse shape. Because convolution also flips the signal, what we do is that we want to implement this operation as a filter. So in advance, we flip the pulse shape like that. What happens is that when the convolution flips the signal again, and then the resultant is just a simple correlation between the incoming signal and the pulse shape. The reason we shift it by a symbol time is that taking it to the negative time indices makes it unrealistic. So any, any, any real signal has to start from zero or some positive time in, in index. A pulse amplitude modulation system now can be easily understood. This is the bit sequence 1010 one, mapped on symbol sequence plus a minus a plus a minus a. Riding on a rectangular pulse shape, pulse shape, pulse shape, scaled by minus a, pulse shape, scaled by plus a, pulse shape, scaled by minus a. And then we add all of them together. This is the mathematics of these operations. If you understand it, that's good. If you don't, I hope you can see this, these, this addition through this figure. The block diagram of a pulse amplitude modulation system is very similar to what we have described so far. Every TB seconds a bit arrives after collecting a number of bits with log 2m implies m symbols. So for example in a 4 PAM system we have m equals 4. 
these bits are packed together and they form the address of a lookup table from which the symbol value is selected. The resulting symbol sequence, this is the symbol sequence, which is then this is upsampled by a three in this example, but the general factor is L. The pulse shaping filter, what it does is that it smooths out the resulting waveform and then it is passed through a digital analog converter. It is received with noise. So the ADC after sampling produces a waveform which is somewhere like this. The mesh filter again as we saw that it makes a triangular pulse shape here. We discard all of these and we say that the first symbol was plus A. So we map this and this basically comes here just plus or if you want to go the proper route after down sampling it comes here similarly we discard three intermediate samples and this sample comes here discard three intermediate samples this one comes here this one comes here and then they are mapped on the decision region and from where we say okay the first symbol was plus a the second was plus 3a third is minus a fourth is minus 3a so here is a little demonstration of what we have just learned in the lecture the flow graph is titled pam transmitter with a rectangular pulse shape and hence the corresponding id and the generate option is qt gui the sample rate is 32000 i just left it as default one thing I would emphasize you is to play around with the blocks. As usually what I have to include a block, I just do control F and I find the name. But it's better if you actually play around so that you get to become familiar with the blocks you have not even used. You will see them and one of them might become very helpful to you. This sample per sim is a samples per symbol. In this case, I have chosen eight and I have just imported numpy here because i want to generate some vectors now the bits are being generated from the random source it will produce a stream of zeros and ones number of samples after which they repeat i use the blocks which are irrelevant out of it so for example throttle it is important but it is not a part of a pam transmitter so you will see i have basically taken it out of the actual flow similarly character to float not important so i have taken it out of the actual flow this is a theme you will see recurring again and again in, in these flow graphs which i have built after the bits generation we have a block which is called pack k bits pack k bits implies it depending on the modulation scheme it will accumulate the number of bits that can be mapped into a symbol you will see more when we discuss pam and quam schemes k is one because we are choosing one bit per symbol the map is minus one one, which means a zero bit is mapped to minus one, a one bit is mapped to one. Character to float, we were using a byte structure here, so that's why here we need to change this character to float. Now this part can be a bit confusing, so I let me explain this further. I could have joined these two interpolating FIR filter blocks into one. First, you see the difference. Here the interpolation is by eight. Here there is no interpolation. Here the taps are one and then all zeros. Here they are all ones. This is a rectangular pulse shape. And this is just the process of upsampling. Why I am doing is just to be consistent with what we have explained in the lecture and what the theoretical concept in DSP is. What this block does is that this is an array of a single one and the seven zeros. So what it does is that it just inserts zeros as explained in the lecture between every two symbols then i see the output here for the time saying and then actually i filter this waveform through a rectangular pulse shape let us run the flow graph and we can easily see what we are doing here so you see up sampled symbols each symbol minus one one and then seven zeros are inserted between each of them the waveform is rectangular you can see here there is a rectangular waveform because this block is interpolating the upsampled zeros and then we can see the spectrum if you remember the spectrum of a rectangular pulse shape is a sync signal and this is what we are 
knowing. Now we can see the problem with the rectangular pulse shape. The side lobe is just a few dB below the main lobe. So there's a lot of interference. And if we are going to transmit this waveform through a channel or we are going to pack multiple users into the same channel, there will be a lot of an interchannel interference. We need a better pulse shape. Having discussed our structure for a PAM transmitter with a rectangular pulse shape, we come to a PAM receiver with a rectangular pulse shape. This part of the flow graph is exactly the same as discussed before. And I included it here so that I can see the signals at various points. So for example, the original symbols, the upsampled symbols, and the transmit signal. This will give you a very nice idea of how these things are being done in correspondence with the lecture. One new block here is the virtual sync because I want I could have given the output of this block to this decimating FIR filter, but then it would have been a little messy. So I have used the virtual sync here and then I have virtual source here, which is giving the same input to this block. So let's discuss the block first. N symbols I've just included so that I can see the number of points and sample rate is 4000 sample per symbol is 4 and down sample delay I have chosen is as 0. What is down sample delay? No, I could have I could have chosen a decimation factor as explained in the lecture that we have to decimate at the receiver by a number of samples per symbol. I could have included here sam sam per sim and that would have been it. But then I would have no control over after how many samples I need to down sample. Because topic of timing recovery comes later. I need to manually control after how many samples I throw the samples and keep the sample corresponding to my symbol. Therefore, uh, instead of down sampling, in this way, I have chosen a down sampler which consists of a skip head and keep one in n blocks. Skip head means that we throw the samples before these many samples and keep one in n is, as the name says, one in every sample sim samples. According to the blocks involved, we need to adjust this value. So this is the oscilloscope for match filter signal and this is for the symbol estimates. Finally, the constellation sync. What constellation sync is doing is making a scatter plot. I will explain the scatter plot in a little time. So here are the original symbols, plus one and minus ones, which are mapped from the bits, zeros and ones. I have deliberately chosen a low sample rate so that the values are updated slowly so that we can trace the whole sequence with one particular set of values plus ones minus ones they are up sampled by four which means between each two symbols we are inserting three zeros and the rectangular pulse shape implies it is smoothing out these with the up sampled symbols through the rectangular pulse shape you can see here plus one minus one plus one plus one minus one plus one and then minus one Match filters is the same rectangular pulse shape which we saw here. This decimating FIR filter is acting as a match filter. And in fact, I can, I should have included it here. Match filter. And let's run the flow graph again. Here it is. Now you can see that uh, this these waveforms are being match filtered. So the rectangular pulses are becoming triangular pulses. And plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. Sorry, plus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, and so on. Symbol estimates, if you can see, they are no noise, no distortion. They correspond exactly to the original symbols. And this is why I included everything in one flow graph and chosen a low update rate so that we can see this correspondence. What scatter plot does is that it takes these values and maps them on a grid, basically consisting of in phase and quadrature components. Now, the modulation scheme is pulse amplitude modulation, which means there is no Q part. That's why you can see that the quadrature part is zero in both cases, and the in phase part is plus one or minus one. So, this 
plus one is mapped here this minus one is mapped here like uh, in, in this minus one is mapped here and this is where we take the decisions 